he has a very high profile, although late the last years he's been kind of reclusive. But in general, he's a very famous person in Norway. He came from a working class background. It's a true fairy tale story. He started as a kind of a high school dropout. He had dyslexia. Uh, he, his parents didn't really know what to do with him. He had two DUIs in his uh, youth. Uh, so the solution, they kind of found out. They asked a relative if he could hire a worker at his fishing boat as a teenager. I started out as a couple of years as a fisherman in Norway. Then he relocated to Seattle in around 1980 and dressed this kind of history. 15 years later, he was a billionaire in Kroner based on fisheries, real estate, shipbuilding, sports retail industry. Came back to Norway in 95, 96. He then raided one of the biggest industrial companies in Norway, uh, Aker, and that became kind of a hell of a story. So this is one of the things that he's going to be giving his money to do, which is the construction of a ship to research the ocean and how to clean it up. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And since he has spent so much time on the ocean, first of all, as a fisherman in Alaska in, in, in the 80s, he's very close to the sea. It's meant a lot to him. That's the way he has created his fortune. And for the moment, he's not a fisher. Man, now he's more like a oil tycoon. Uh, his biggest asset is uh, Auker BP. So it, it is interesting, isn't it, that he has made uh, a lot of his money from being an oil baron and the products that come from oil are the kinds of things that pollute the sea. Is, is there a sense in your view that he is wanting to somehow make up for how he's made his money to, to try and give something back in that way that he somehow feels guilty? I'm not sure if guilty is the right word, but he truly believes that uh, the ocean has given him so much. He kind of feels obliged to give something back to the ocean and the environment. 